And here is Wallace himself who will come and take a turn at the front. Just 5.7 kilometers away from making history. This becoming the first man to win this race on three occasions overall. I say that because, again, if you're switching on just for the final few kilometers today, there's been a protest because of safety of the final five kilometers. And the GC times will be taken 150 meters before the foot of the final climb of the day, the Keberg, at five k's to go. Second group at 10 seconds. If they get back though, you wonder how the legs are. A lot of these riders in the brakes, it's the best again. Here's she on his wheel, Trentin, third wheel in the black and white. Then you have Yves Lompard and the race leader himself, Tim Wellington, still in a crosswind section. Everyone just trying to get that little bit of shelter over to the right-hand side. Everybody just seems happy for the moment, just, um, you know, riding through, sitting in this group. Of course, Lotto Destiny, thinking of the stage one, also thinking of, you know, keeping Vermeers there on that podium. Plenty of points there. He's at 23 seconds in second place at the minute, but tied on time with Yves Lompard. Lompard steal a second, he moves up to second, of course. All of those times have to be stolen, have to be made, lost, or whatever. Gains will be calculated in just over four kilometers time now. You can expect, having seen that final five kilometers, that's an interesting fight for the stage win. It is, but for the size of group that's left here, um, I think there are a lot of that kind of danger is taken out. It's okay. Hitting that in a, a big peloton, which they did, they deemed it, I believe, is to be too dangerous. I we think it's, I don't see, I think it was a narrow road more than anything, um, and the crash yesterday in the narrow road that, that concerned them the most. So I think the way that the race is running out here, I, I can't see there, there being a problem. It's just a little bit of a shame in, in my book here that we never had the uh, green kilometre and the bonuses at the finish, because that would have changed things a little bit in this front group. Tim Wellens, the leader of the GC, another few pedal strokes close. He's moving up here. On the inside while he can, getting that shelter, does not want to be out of position if any moves go. Right on the wheel of Mark Hirschi. Gap to the next group at 15 seconds. But again, they're going to need to have some mighty legs from somewhere. Dig really deep, certainly for half of the quartet here, because they were in the morning breakaway, G and Amador. What's the plan here for you? Just try and keep this pace to 5Ks to go and make sure it's nice and safe? It seems like um, everybody's content, even Lotto Destiny. I think Senechal is still in this this uh, front group. Um, Senechal can sprint a little bit, but I think for Sudal Quickstep, when you look around this group and you've got, oh, there's a peloton and they're closing down. Well, they were far so, too content then, weren't they? Yeah, it's, it seems it looks as if it could all come back together now. So who's doing this chasing at the front? And it looks as if Grupama are one of the teams. So just when we were thinking about, you know, who's going to go on the attack, you know, why don't Lampard, Senechal, you know, if they come to a sprint, you've got Philipson, and Delee. I wouldn't be too confident of that. Grupama starting to ride with um, with a DSM, Jayco as well. So this could all come back together as um, soon as we turn right on that climb. Sangler's attacked. Stood at 34 seconds, seeing what he can eke out moving up in the GC before those times are taken in 2.4 kilometers time at the foot of the Keberg. Remember, there's that big swing from a wide road to a very narrow one from left to right. And just amazing, surprised. amazingly, they've got back in here, Brian. Yeah, I'm just surprised that there's not been any more attacking from that uh, front group you know everybody realizes that the, you, the cut off is at the bottom of the climb so if you're thinking of the gc just go all in if you're thinking of the stage then you know you're going to sit back but majority of the uh, top 10 are all here uh Stuyven hasn't even 
tried. Lampard hasn't even tried. You know, they're, they're just kind of sitting there uh, and waiting. Sudal, quick step, we've got two riders here. Senechal, he'll be thinking more of the stage and trying to do something on this climb, but seeing that, they're turning left here and we get never closer to the bottom of this climb and this peloton is coming and, uh, you know, they're coming with more speed than there is at the front of the race because they're trying to kind of save that little bit of energy because they know this final climb is coming and, you know, some sort of action is going to be up for the stage, but it looks as if the, the GC battle, there's no one else. You've got, what, a kilometre and a half now? to go to the, the finish of the GC battle so it looks as if Tim Wellens will be making history. I think a lot of the riders in here are now starting to think more about the stage than the GC. They need to get their act together thinking about the stage anyway because it's only 10 seconds now back to the peloton. Just over a kilometre until we get the GC times taken for the final time in this year's Renewy Tour. Job almost done for Tim Wellens. It's a race into the final right-hand turn that will see these GC team times taken. Ten seconds between the front and the second group. It's a ferocious chase behind to try and get back in with the likes of Coy Melir. And company here at the front, though. Phillips are in this group, we know. Plenty of other fast men, including Arnaud Deli. All yeah, eyes, though, on 500 metres to go to the right-hand turn here, where the GC times will be taken, Brian. And Tim Wellens is about to be proclaimed winner of this race as long as he finishes the stage. Yeah, I think, uh, yes, what the best is, you know, he's, he's putting a couple of tons in now. Um, purely because he, he wants this group to stay away, uh, where there's others in here maybe don't want, um, you know, this group to stay away, and I think it is slowly coming back together. Just over 5K, Stigo, I can tell you here. The five kilometer itself banner doesn't come until we get to this right turn that's coming up now, and it looks as though we are about to take it. Once we're through, that will be that as far as the general classification is concerned. So as long as he finishes the race, Tim Wellens will be declared winner of the general classification. He knows that now. He's on the radio saying thanks. Job done for him. And it looks as though he will ride in now at his own pace. Brian does not want to get caught up in any of the silly business. Yeah, and this is this is the reason why. And it, you can see that uh, Sudal Quickstep made a big F up there, um, trying to get Tim Merlier back. He was already dropped, and this climb is coming up, and maybe that's the why this, uh, Seneschal and Lampard weren't uh, trying to do something. They were hoping that um, Tim Merlier could come back to the front of this race, but I don't think he's got the same power as Phillips or, or uh, Arnold Ali. Um, but they are almost made the junction, but he got dropped in the, in the uh, previous climb. And it's moves at the front. Wellens knows he can drop back now. He has won the race, provided he stays upright. And from behind, they're trying to come across and join in. Medley are fighting away. Van Avermaet trying to get back involved as well. And those who missed out first time are trying to get this now is Seneschal. Yeah, just as Tim Miller was trying to get on. Yeah, was good. <laughs> Hence the tone in the voice. Yes, well, you remember that welter stage one <laughs> a few years ago with uh, Jakobsen? Um, but yeah, possibly maybe a little bit unaware about what was happening behind him. Um, I think he was saving something for, for going in that. But yeah, just watch for Soren Kral here in the uh, Alpecin de Koenig colours. I think he's looking at potentially uh, trying to launch in on this climb as well. well over the Kiberg could they go. And this is Seneschal then. On his wheel, you can just see Matteo Trentin. There's Kral on the left hand side in the blue. And this is Wellens now making his way in to the finale as easily as possible. He's the winner of the race. Yeah, taking absolutely no risk. Um, I thought he had the legs to, to maybe try, you know, to try and kind of help out in the final. Trenton seems to be on a good day. You know, he could have helped him in the final a little bit. So maybe he doesn't want to take any risks. Um, you know, he's won this race for the third time, but I would 
you know, if I was in the car, I would, I would have tried to encourage him to, to try and stay here because all week he's been uh, showing he's got some some good good legs and he could have been a you know help at the finish there, even if he'd he'd attacked that final climb. A little up there as we go into three k's to go, and this is Vermeers second in the general classification. That's the position he'll go away with. He's now after a stage win. A nervous corner. Which way do you go? And now Søren Kral. Round the corner, Trentin wants to chase Mohoric in there. Sturven now in fourth wheel as well. And this is a big move now from Søren Kral. Back to winning ways this year when he won in Frankfurt. And here he is trying to do his best on Belgian roads. And he's Just really did. strung it out again. Yeah, he did. He did it in the previous lap in the cobble section as well. Um, gaps starting to appear all over the place, but this is Mohoric territory. He's he's sitting there waiting to pounce the rider in the, the red with the... The orange and the helmet. Stoyven has moved himself up to Lee still there. Very small group. This is a danger time because this is when people are kind of starting to look at each other and there's not enough teammates uh, in this front group uh, for anybody to, to try and control this. Phillips is still there. And both Marit and Turnus are still there. Just keep your eye on those guys. They are fast, fast finisher. Marit, of course, the pure sprinter. Turnus, so we know, fast from any group, as it's all smiles after a job well done for UAE Emirates, who'll take the GC prize. Inside two Ks to go now. And yet again, it's Kraut. Big opportunity here. They, they must know that there's a couple of good sprinters still in here with Delee in the mint jersey and uh, Jasper Phillips. Uh, so... You know, I think um, the bus coming up to, to just kind of keep things rolling on. They've got Vermeersian here. He was up there in the general classification. But just in this small road, perfect opportunity just to try and do what Mike Tunison done uh, a couple of days ago. Well, for the likes of Phillips, so the points classification's up for grabs as well. Let's not forget. De Lee's in charge of it at the moment. But a win here can change things in that classification as well. Yeah, Soren Kral just riding at the front here. He's stopping everything. He knows that... You know, if anybody was to go away in this kind of small uh, road here, there would be a big opportunity for them. But uh, Matteo Trentin got some good legs when Soren Kral went. He was straight on him. So he's just keeping the tempo high now. He doesn't want anybody coming back. It's a little bit easier to sprint in a smaller group than it is if that uh, junction is made from the, the group that are very close at the rear of this front group. Coming around the corner, and they'll soon be going under the Flam Rouge with one kilometre to go. It's Søren Kral who continues to string it up. That's one of the other Marche riders has to pull out there. Looks like it might have been Madit. 1K to go now, and gaps everywhere. Now, this is getting interesting. It's opening up. That's Lompard who pulls off to the right-hand side. And De Lee. And De Lee who is with him. So, this now is Stavl. Philipson. Yep, Philipson has been caught behind as well. So, Søren Kral has to go, Trentin, Mahoric, and it uh, looks like um, it's the, the bus that's up here. It is, he sits at the back. Remember, he's a fast finisher, and he doesn't get his own opportunities often. He has six bike race wins to his name from when he did get those opportunities. He's at 500 metres to go now with the rest of them. Trentin. This is Søren Kral, and behind, it doesn't look like they're coming back yet at all. Trentin, Trentin waits looks and looks good, good doesn't he? Yeah. They've come into the final few hundred metres. It's been almost five hours of racing today. We had a stoppage in the middle. It's been dramatic on and off the bike. UAE have already won this overall. They're looking for the stage win as well now. On the left-hand side, it's Trentin going to the line. Mohoric trying to come around him, though. Here's Matej Mohoric to the line. It is victory for Bahrain victorious. Matej Mohoric takes the final stage win. Trentin works so hard for his teammate today. Moritz gave it a try and a break. He's won the small sprint and he is victorious on the final day in the Renewy Tour. Mahe Moritz takes the stage. Greg van Avram at there across the line in the final day of stage racing in his nation. And his... When Matty Mohoric, you put a, a mic to him, he always, he, he always gives a fantastic interview. Yeah. And Sam, to say the same with Remco Evenepoel yesterday as well, I can completely understand his ire. I don't think anybody who knows the first bit about cycling has no issue with the riders wanting to be safe. We want it to be safe as well. Everybody does. But of course, you see Matej Mohoric here winning the stage and out sprinting Trentin. 
Well, I would say, to echo Mohoric's sentiments, is these decisions should not be being made on the road. They should be made well in advance. And let's do it from this perspective. I, I'm somebody who has a lot of friends and family who don't know the first thing about cycling. 